everyone, welcome back to my channel, Bubby and Bean. If you're new here, my name is Shayla. I'm so glad you guys are joining me today. Um, so today I thought I would show you guys a neat little way I came up with um, for storing some fussy cut images. Um, I don't know if you guys are like me, but sometimes I buy books for the images um, that are in them, um, older books, and I don't really have a good way of keeping them separated um, once I fussy cut them until I'm ready to use them. So I was like, how could I possibly make something um, or have some sort of system, and I don't know if this is foolproof, we'll see, uh, out of you know the materials that I have um, and also too so I know what you know where those images came from or what types of images are where um, so I, f I came up with this idea and I thought it was pretty neat I don't know if anyone's ever done this um, so this is a book that I had gotten for the images um, it's like a Peter Peter Rabbit uh, kind of like nursery rhymes um, like storybook a giant treasury so it had a bunch of like smaller stories in here I by the same author I'd imagine um, and all I did is once I was done basically cutting up this book um, I had all these images which are in here that I had no idea I was like well I had them actually sandwiched between the two book covers um, and I and then I had this great idea that maybe I could turn this book cover because it is nice it's nice and hard um so it'll it'll keep the papers protected but uh maybe i could turn it into a, basically a little accordion file so i don't know if you can see that let me see if i can show you um so basically all i did was i folded some paper um and i put it in here but there's a few steps that kind of go into that um as far as making this. So I thought we could make one together and then maybe you can store your things like this um, as well. I am interested actually, and so there's the inside. I'm just gonna throw those back in there. Um, but I am interested in you know hearing other people's thoughts um, on how they store their paper ephemera. Um, I definitely have looked up videos and things like that, but it's kind of hard for me to I don't know, sometimes I always find things with it. I'm like, yeah, but what about, you know, X, Y, and Z? So uh, I'd love to know how you guys potentially store your uh, fussy cut images or your vintage ephemera. I'm always looking for more storage and organization hacks for the craft room. It feels like that's a place that's never fully, fully put together. You have to kind of keep at it, but um, yeah, I'm always looking for that. So definitely drop a comment below if you have some great tips to share. I'm sure we'd all love to hear. Um, okay, so this is another book that I had cut up. These are all the images in here. Um, and I want to do the same thing. So I thought we'll do one together. So I'm just going to take these images and I'm going to set them off to the side here since we don't need them. I got quite a few out of this book. Um, it's called Answers and More Answers, Qu Answers to Questions That Every Child Asks. But I, I mean, you can't get rid of this cover. And for me, it's a little big to do a journal. I have done big journals before, but they are, I feel like a little bit harder to do. Um, it's harder to find signature pages for them. Um, there's a lot of things why I like smaller journals, but, um, you know, I can still use these covers to make a little accordion file. So that's what we're gonna do today. So first things first, I have gutted the book. Um, the spine is still intact. However, we're gonna remove the spine because I don't need for this um, book to be this big, like with the spine. And the spine is kind of worn anyways, so it's probably best to remove it. Um, so first things first, I have a lovely craft knife. Um, if you have an X-Acto knife, that'll work. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run my knife down uh, the edge right here to get rid of that spine. So let me see, let me see if I can pull y'all up just a little bit. Okay, so you can see that, there we go. So all I'm gonna do is just run my craft knife. Hopefully I won't get much resistance. There we go. 
Okay, so we got that part, one, one off. And now we'll do the other side. Watch out, the dust may fly. So if you have allergies and you're cutting up old books, when you start sneezing, you know why. Okay, gotta get it going here. And this stuff right here, this like old cheesecloth, um, would actually be cool to use. See, because it's kind of see-through. I don't know if you can see that. So maybe we'll set that off to the side. That would be neat to use, don't you think? Okay. We're going to cut this off here. Okay. Maybe. All right. And then I'm actually going to save this paper just because it's so caramely. Um, I think it would make, you know, great to put in a scrap pack or use for some sort of embellishment. So, okay, we're just gonna get rid of all the little sawdust clippings there. Okay, and so the next thing I wanna do, oh, that's just gonna peel right off. That's just the cover or part of the spine. The glue's just coming off because it's so old. I think this book was from the 70s when I had originally tore it up. I looked at it. Um, I will tear up old books. I know. I'm that person. Okay, so this looks pretty straight to me. I'm going to just kind of take my scissors. Basically, just make sure, you know, you don't have like too much overhang or jagged edges or, you know, things like that. So I'm just going to kind of cut this a little bit. Make sure it's, for the most part, pretty straight. Okay. Cut this part as well. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. I'm actually filming this before Friday, but it'll be Friday when you guys see it, so. <laughs> um, my husband has been off this week from work, which I think he definitely needed that. Um, he is very hardworking. He never takes off work or anything. So I was really excited when he took off and actually it was his boss's, you know, not idea, but you know, he's like, you should take some time off. So I think it's because he had his boss's blessing. He was able to, um, you know, kind of make that decision, take some time off. It's very important. I always tell him work-life balance, super, super important, but you know, he's a workhorse. Okay, so I have these two. Um, that's, okay, so it's, it goes like that, front and back. You can see that, they're cut. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to make sure that these, um, I'm gonna stick these together. So, and this is just pretty bare bones. You could, if you wanted to, you could decorate the inside of this, cover it with paper, um, you know, fabric if you really wanted to. However, since it's just going to kind of store some things for me, I don't need it to be that pretty. Um, I think it already is kind of pretty. It already has that aged look. I'm using, you know, a book. It definitely matches with like a junk journaler's craft room. So that I'm pretty excited about. Okay. And so one other thing, when I made my prototype, while it was great, um, I had put the tape, I basically smushed these two um, covers together so they were like this, very close, and then I put the tape down. Well, what happened is when I tried to fold it, it was pretty hard to fold and I kind of had to force fold it, and I'd like to not do that, so I'm going to leave just a little gap, a little space, so that way they can fold um, properly. So I am using some tape, some heavy-duty tape. This is Everbuilt, Everbuilt. It's basically um, housing tape. So if you've ever heard of Tyvek tape, um, that's kind of what it is. Sorry, it's something on my nail. Um, but it's just a different brand. And you can get it at hardware stores. It's not too expensive. And obviously you get a huge roll of it. Um, but you could also use duct tape. Duct tape would work or like packing tape, moving tape. That could work too, like shipping. Just make sure it's, you know, like a heavy duty or extra strength kind of packing tape. So, um, okay. 
So just making sure when I lay it down that there is a little bit of a gap. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over, still holding that roll of tape. And then, pull, and then I'm just going to put the tape on the other side, on the front. Okay. And then we're gonna flip it over one more time. So we're back at the beginning. And I'm just gonna go probably like an inch or so, um, and then just cut it off. So, and that's it for that. Make sure it's all nice and smoothed down. And now, okay, see that's much easier to fold. The other one was like, it was stuck open. Um, but now you have like a little, basically like a little file folder, but it's a book. So before we do the little accordion part, um, I wanna cover this with some fabric on the outside. Just, you don't have to, like I said, if it's for storage, it doesn't have to look absolutely pretty, but let's make it a little pretty. Cause you know, that's what we do. Um, I have a few different strips of like scrap fabric. I had actually gotten this bag of scrap. Oh, I have it right here actually. It's this, it's a bag of like quilting scraps. So there's like a lot of strips um, in it. And I thought actually this would be perfect to use for this project because it's kind of just been sitting here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I think this fabric will look cute and it's big enough, it's wide enough. So I think we can use that for that. Like I said, it doesn't have to be pretty. And this is a good opportunity to use fabrics or papers that you're like, oh, I probably wouldn't use those in my journals or um, something like that, then use it, you know, for a utility purpose. Um, that's definitely a great idea. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this bad boy. I actually have ooh, some lovely pinking shears. I want to say thank you to my grandma very much. She actually got these for me for Christmas. I was very surprised. She watches, so hi, Grandma. <laughs> um, oh man, that just made such a nice edge. Those are perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut the other side. And basically, pinking shears, they're fabric scissors, um, but not only do they give it a nice edge, um, the edge also that it cuts keeps it, the fabric from fraying. So that's why those are really nice. Um, okay, so perfect. So I have it cut on both sides. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a hefty glue. This is um, Beacon 3-in-1 glue. If you know about like Fabrifix or Fabri-Tac, um, those are other Beacon, I think, glues. Um, and they work just as great. It's just a clear silicone glue. And I really like it. Um, I just really like it. I'm not sponsored or anything. Um, so I'm gonna be using that today to put this on. And one pro tip I will say, whenever you're gluing your fabric on, um, don't glue it straight like this, because if you glue it straight, and let's say your fabric is just a little bit short, um, sometimes when you fold it, it'll pull and stretch the fabric to where then it shows some of your tape. Of course, if you have a thick piece of fabric, I don't think I'll have any issues here. I could definitely glue it like that, but you also risk getting possible bubbles. Um, so I just, I'm just gonna glue it uh, folded and I think it'll be just fine. Um, so let's see, zoom y'all in just a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some glue down over the tape, put a good amount. If you're using a light color fabric with this glue, I highly recommend kind of just smushing the glue with your finger to where it's just kind of nice and even because you might get some bleed through and you can definitely see it, well really on most fabrics. So just recommend it for any fabric to just make sure there's no kind of clumps. Okay, so I'll kind of just rub that in. And there's a little cut torn piece, so just very gently put that down. Cute. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it over on the other side and I'm just gonna do the same thing. 
Just put some glue over the tape part. Okay. Also, if you guys um, make junk journals or, you know, you tend to have a lot of book covers laying around, I'm curious to know what you guys use them for. Do you use them just for junk journals? Are there other ideas you use them for? I'd love to know. Because it seems like I'm up to my ears in book covers and book pages all the time. So I can always use some more ideas. Am I right? I think that's why we're all here on YouTube for some ideas. Okay, so we have that. It's not completely glued down, that's okay. We'll put just a little, like I said, you can decorate this to basically, you know, your liking. If you're like, I just need it to function, you don't have to do the fabric part. Um, you can just literally do the tape and then go. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so now we have that. It is nice and adhered. And I just have to say, it is already looking so cute. Am I right? Okay, so now we have to do the paper portion. And I did not grab any scrap of paper, so I'm gonna grab some to fit this and then I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I have a paper pad um, that I just don't really gravitate towards that often. It's a 12 by 12. And I will say for this project, usually I can make two of the little accordion pieces or basically two pieces for one of these um, out of one 12 by 12. So I guess just depending obviously on how big your book is or how much accordion you want, you know, it might not work, but um, but it worked for me. So let's see. I'm gonna try and find one that does not have sparkle. I have noticed, I think one of the reasons I don't, okay, this might work. One of the reasons I don't use this um, paper a lot is because of the heavy sparkle. For some reason, when I fold it on the sparkles, um, I get cracking, so I don't know. It, that might be the paper, the paper might just be old, who knows. Um, okay, so I have this, which is a 12 by 12 piece of scrap of paper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure, I'm gonna flip this open, and let's see. Y'all can see, I'm sorry, my desk is messy, as always, right? Um, so I'm just gonna measure to where I want my, um, uh, basically accordion. So I don't want the accordion part to go in the groove here. So I'm gonna measure right outside of that. And then um, I don't want it to go to the very edge. So I'm probably gonna use this kind of inner page, I guess, uh, cover liner. I don't know if that, what this is called. Um, I'm gonna use that as a guide of how long these should be. So, Let's see here, do I have a pen or something? Yes, I actually have a marker. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a little mark where I wanna cut the paper, which is right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. Hopefully, um, we're just winging it a little bit. I mean, I did one of these, but you know, things can always go awry in the craft room. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to Put that bad boy right there and I'm gonna cut all the way across this this is a scrap we can save that for another day some different play time um, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this in half um, I think that'll be plenty and since I know it's 12 by 12 I can cut it right at the six marker which is right here and it should be even Steven okay so now that I have these two, um, I'm going to accordion fold it. Now the first time I did this, I just folded it one way and then folded it the other way and eyeballed it. But I wanna be a little more mathematical this time around. Um, so if you have one of these handy dandy things, and what is that Shayla? This is a scoring board, a very dirty scoring board. Um, I believe this is the Martha Stewart yeah, Martha Stewart doesn't say collection, but it's not a collection. Um, and I think this is like a, is this for scoring? No, 
Okay, it comes with this little bonus thing. I don't know what it does, but I'm not gonna use that. I can't find my bone folder, which is something that you typically use for scoring. So we're gonna use these tweezers because we are crafty people, we are inventive, and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're at six mark or er, six marks. <laughs> we're at six inches right here. Um, and so all I'm gonna do, I want three folds. So let's see. We'll start in the middle. Let's start here. Okay. And basically this is just gonna help me make my folds a little more even. Um, okay. So then let's go to the four marker here. Okay. And okay, that wasn't right. I just went off the rails there. Okay. And then we'll go, oh, hold your paper if you're using one of these. Five, okay, so we have, so if we fold that, this one will basically be glued. So if we fold these, that's one, okay, two, okay, so maybe we just make a line at every one inch marker. It seems pretty fair. Okay, so we have that. All I did was I folded them. And now, I'm gonna set that off to the side. I am going to fold these accordion style. So. That's what's nice about that is it just kind of gives you your folds for you. And I like to fold the first one inwards because you're gonna glue that one, um, or actually, I'm sorry, it's outwards. Because when you glue it, you want this pretty paper to be facing the outside. But if you don't, or it doesn't matter what orientation, then just fold it, you know? And you wanna fold, so the first fold I folded this way now I'm gonna fold the opposite way. And then we're gonna flip and fold again. And the bone folder would be nice because it helps you make crisp folds. Um, once you do fold them, you could run your bone folder across it and it would be really nice and crisp, but who knows where mine is. So the desk gremlins win today. Okay, so we got our first one done. So it should look like a fan um, that you get at a carnival or something. And all you're gonna do is glue it right here. But before I do that, um, well, we'll go ahead and glue it. Why not, what the heck? So let's, I'm gonna use Fabrifix again. Or I'm sorry, this isn't Fabrifix, it's three in one. It's the same thing. Well, it feels like the same thing. It's probably not, but it works really well. I'm just going to put a generous amount on here. Um, and then I'm just going to put it down. We're just going to glue it. Okay. All right. So that's glued. I want, I do want to make sure it is smoothed out there. Let me just take a peek at this. Fix my mistakes. No, I'm kidding. There were no mistakes. I'm perfect. No, I'm kidding. I'm definitely not kidding. Okay, so now that I have that, that is just, we're gonna let that chill. And while it is chilling, I actually have these little bulldog clips. You can just use binder clips. They're nothing special. Crafters use them, people use them. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clip one side. Almost broke my wrist trying to open that. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm just gonna clip that just so it stays down while I do the next one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our scoring board back here. Set that on top. Same thing, I'm just gonna make a line at every inch marker. So this is, maybe I should use this side. And you do wanna be careful, like these are a little pointy, so I'm nervous I'm going to um, poke through, but I'll try and just be careful here. Okay. So far so good. This thing I do, I highly recommend a scoring board, especially if you're not very good at making straight lines. 
I mean, because it does it for you. So we're done with the scoring board. We can put that away. And by away, I mean on the floor. Um, okay. And now, same thing. We're just going to fold. And then fold back. And fold again. And fold. And then fold one more time. Okay. So we have our little accordion yet again and then i'm just gonna put that one down here same thing we're gonna use this glue ah little glue glo globule okay i hope you guys had a wonderful new year's are y'all still on track for your new year's goals have you already kind of flubbed them a little bit? If you have, I won't tell. It's, uh, that's okay. I feel like that's kind of in our nature, you know? But that's in my nature anyways, so. <laughs> oh, you can't even see that. So, okay, so I just glued that one side, that one little strip down. Um, and then, and so you can make these longer like you could do smaller accordions um, if you wanted to do that. I just, I don't know. I like the bigger accordion style. I think it looks good. And then you don't have to make so many folds. So that's another point. Okay, so we have the other one right here. I'll set that there. And so now what we're going to do, this part is it can get a little messy with the glue. So just forewarning. I'm going to take this one off. And I'm going to go ahead and put the glue down for this guy. And I'm going to put it on here so I make sure that it sticks when I put it together. Okay. And now this one, same thing. We're going to run the glue. Careful, don't get glue on your sweater. I think I'm telling that to myself more than anybody else. I really like this sweater. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of hold these down a little bit because I have to get them in place. So just kind of hold them down. You can see that I'm holding them down. And then I'm just going to take the book and smush it. Okay. Give it a nice little smush on both sides. And then I would say walk away, don't touch it, you know, make a snack, something like that. But you want to make sure you don't glue um, your card, your paper together, like if there's any glue sticking out. So I'm just going to go in and gently open it. And basically all I'm doing is making sure that every little piece is glued down. And I'm going to do that for both sides, make sure that there's no sticking going on or anything of that nature and then once you know that that's not the case you can clip it just like that and then wait for it to dry so that is the finished product go ahead and open it back up so essentially it's a little accordion file that you can now use um super easy to make super easy way to recycle a book cover that maybe isn't so fortunate to be a journal cover. Um, you know, we are all about reuse, so that's super important. And it's a good way to kick off any sort of, you know, organizational um, goals that you might have for the new year, maybe for your craft room. I know I have several, oh, the endless list of organization goals, I'll say that much. <laughs> But I do want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, thank you again for tuning in, for watching all of your great comments. Um, I'd love to hear what you're thinking. So you tell me what your goals are for the new year. Tell me how you organize your ephemera um, or what you use journal covers for that maybe aren't journal covers um, or book covers, I guess. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Bye.